Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. Today we're going to talk about different reasons to buy or not to buy the Surface Pro X. There's a couple reasons that I think that we should take off the table immediately. If you're interested in getting the Surface Pro X and uh, also are interested in saving 10% getting the Surface Pro X, please watch this video and check the links that I have in the description. This channel is for people who are looking at buying the Surface Pro X, the Surface Pro 7 uh, for digital artists, and for anyone who uses a touchscreen tablet, um, preferably one with a pen. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of content specifically for you. If that's you, then click the subscribe button and uh, the notification icon as well. All right, so let's quickly take off the table uh, a couple different reasons why I think the Surface Pro X is not worth buying. Uh, if you're buying it for extended battery life, if you're buying it for connected LTE, if you're buying it for a better pen, better pen storage, for not having to charge the pen, for uh, lower jitter or latency on the pen, I think all of those reasons are not good reasons for buying the Surface Pro X. If you just want to have the sexiest Windows 10 tablet on the market, okay, now we're talking. Maybe this is a good reason to buy the Surface Pro X. Those slim bezels are quite slim. Okay, so why are all those things off the table? Well, pretty much all of them are nominal problems that can be solved with relatively easy or simple solutions. Um, battery life, uh, really putting the tablet into uh, power saving mode, you're gonna get a much better, like if we're comparing this to the Surface Pro 7 i5 or i7, putting in batter, battery saver mode, you're going to um, greatly increase the battery life enough that you can probably do everything that you wanna do in one day with the device. And if you don't have enough battery, um, watch my Surface Pro 7 accessories guide, and you can pick up a battery for $75 that will double the life of the Surface Pro 7. In battery saver mode, the Surface Pro 7, i5, and i7 are still going to be relatively similar in performance, um, if not faster in some ways, than the Surface Pro X. So you're not really losing a lot of performance. I, I would say of, of all of the off the table reasons that battery life is the one that's most compelling to me. But I think it's important to actually look at your daily usage. And if you're using your tablet for an actual three hours or an actual six hours, and you can easily plug it in, uh, for what you're sacrificing to get the Surface Pro X, which is a lot of compatibility issues, what you're sacrificing if you want to do certain things uh, I don't think the battery life is a, is a compelling enough reason. So what exactly are you sacrificing to get the Surface Pro X? Uh, the big elephant in the room is compatibility. 64-bit uh, programs do not run on the Surface Pro X ARM chip. Uh, now in that 64-bit for x86, not for uh, ARM 64-bit. And that's confusing. Basically what that means is um, any 64-bit app that you probably use will, won't run uh, until they add support. And I'm not sure if they uh, will have that ready or if it will happen. It hasn't happened yet. So I would not um, gamble on that personally. So what is the Surface Pro X perfect for? It's, it is perfect for a couple different um, types of users. If you primarily are using uh, OneNote, uh, Office 365 apps, uh, if you're doing a lot of browsing on the internet, you're watching Netflix, um, and doing some light drawing, and there's actually some pretty good programs that I think will be compatible uh, with the Surface Pro X, um, like uh, Rebel 3, Paint Tool Sci, both of those have 32-bit installers. And I'm sure that there's at least a handful more that will be available. Photoshop, there's a good chance that Photoshop will have a version, uh, although it may be CS5, CS6, or CC2018 that are compatible with the Pro X. It's, it's not going to run faster than the Surface Pro 7 i5 in those applications, but it should run. So who is this perfect for? If you're a student, and you're primarily taking notes, if you're writing reports, if you're browsing the web, if you're using Netflix, 
if you're playing uh, some light, um, you know, basically like phone type of games on your tablet, uh, this is going to be a great machine. And the battery life and connected LTE are, are definite bonuses. For those of you who should definitely avoid it, that would be people who like to do gaming. I would not buy this if you have any interest in doing even light or medium gaming. Uh, if you're a 3D artist, I would avoid the Surface Pro X like the plague uh, until we know for sure something works. And I don't think that it will. Um, graphic designers probably avoid it. Uh, 2D artists, okay. I think you can find something that will work for you. But I'm not exactly sure why you would sacrifice finding something that will work for you when you could just get a Surface Pro 7 instead that works perfectly <laughs> and is really fast and also a nice looking sexy machine. On the fence, I would say uh, if Visual Studio runs uh, for programmers or Sublime or some of the other text editors for programming, um, if those test out and they work well, then this could be a, a really nice machine. Um, probably still not the best choice I'm probably a number of different things better, but it, it could still work. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't checked out my um, accessories guide for the Surface Pro 7, a lot of those same accessories are great for the Surface Pro X. Uh, I'll put the link to that in the description. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and stay creative.